Hati to, hello and happy 2020. At least I hope it's a happy 2020. It's been passably okay for me so far, so I'll waft the good luck over to you. Today, I really wanted to talk about how dumb I am sometimes and how it's okay if you're dumb too. Because I see a lot of people in the historic costuming community and the costuming community and the cosplay community and kind of just like every community online in general planning out like these big elaborate massive projects that have like sort of hinky or problematic undertones and a good chunk of them genuinely don't seem to realize what the problem is and take it really personally whenever people point out like hey bud that's gonna make you look like you support a thing that you probably don't support. But like, I really wanna talk about, about how easy it is to think a thought. And I also finally got like a corner of my house looking nice. So I'm sitting on the floor so I can show off my home decor. You're welcome. Another project that I just did not do, which is actually my main inspiration for making this video, was a moth costume. And I know you're thinking, like, what could possibly have been problematic about a moth costume? Well, in my hometown, there's an invasive species of moth that we would, like, have to send helicopters over the city to spray for so that they wouldn't completely destroy the local crops because we were a very agricultural city, a very rural area. Uh, and so during moth season, you'd have to close all your windows and doors because they'd spray for them at night and you didn't really want the fumes getting in your house. I don't know that the fumes were that bad, but there were a lot of crunchy granola moms in my area that were very concerned about it. Speaking of crunchy, something in my eye. But I thought it would be so cute and fun to make a moth costume and like pose with the moth warning signs and then like scream at the sky as it was coming down. And this was like when I first started trying to do YouTube, which was freshman year of college. So that would have been 2017. And 2017 Maya was kind of dumb. I was, I just did not think things through very well. I didn't know a lot of things about the world. I had been homeschooled. I was decently sheltered. Still am actually pretty decently sheltered. What is in my eye? And I worked so hard to get my makeup looking cute. I really hope my eye isn't red on camera. That is not at all important, but I hope it's not red. But the scientific name is Limentheria Dispar Dispar. And its common name is a literal slur. It's the G slur for the Romani people. They have expressed their concern about it. It's not cool that that's what it's called. Obviously, then I was like, oh, oh no. Maybe I could make the video anyways and no one will notice, right? I actually had that thought. And then I was like, no, 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 I probably shouldn't do that. A year later, I thought about it and I had just like a full body skin lifting cringe whenever I thought about how I, I still wanted to do the thing. I didn't do the thing, but I still wanted to do it because I wanted to make a cool moth costume. I had nothing to do at that point with, you know, screw these people. How dare they potentially be offended at this thing that I haven't done yet. It was more of like, ah, but it's a pretty moth. And it is a pretty moth, but it's a devastating moth. It destroys crops and plants. That's um, unfortunately why it had the name given to it, which is obviously a problem. It's hideous. While doing research for the video, literally just typing the name of the moth into Google so that I could get the scientific name again for this handy dandy paper script I jotted down for myself real quick, I found out that the Entomology Entomological Society of America wasn't even told that the common name for the moth was kind of sus until 2020. And it has officially been changed because they weren't cool with that. This word is also like really commonly used like in the fashion world and in other areas as well, where, you know, it's not as high stakes that people know exactly what you're talking about. Whereas with like literal taxonomy, it seems like that would be the harder thing to change. So I like the article that I read pointed out that like, it's kind of bizarre that it happened the way that it happened. Cause like, I still see people fighting for their right to use the word who are not of 
Romney descent of any kind. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I have a dumb mouth. And of course, that's not the only time that I've had an idea and then had to backpedal and be like, whoa, 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 wait, Maya, that idea is maybe not a great idea. But how was I supposed to know that this is a problem? And how am I supposed to know it's a problem going forward? Well, here's a handy dandy cheat list for you. If like I did during the moth costume research, you actually find something that makes your stomach turn and you go, oh no, oh dear, that's not pretty. Don't leave that out. Or even if you're not gonna turn around completely and drop the project, you should probably mention that you are aware of that and try to mitigate looking like you want to associate with that. My friend Amber, who is a lovely and amazing creator, has done a couple of videos talking about Regency and all of the truly horrific practices that went on in the garment industry at the time. Well worth checking out her stuff. She's fantastic. And like the phrase, no costume without context, has been very prolific in the historic costuming community. And I believe that in the cosplay community, people are aware of that as well, that like, if you're gonna do something that's sus, you should probably acknowledge it. <laughs> also, if through the process, as you're working on gathering materials or doing any research, if you think to yourself like, huh, I'm kind of worried that I'm gonna trigger people or like this group of people, they might be over dramatic about it. Or even like, I wonder if I'll get canceled for this. If at any point during the research process, you think that to yourself, you should probably like put the brakes on, think for a minute, hold on, why am I doing this thing? If I'm already thinking that maybe it's going to cause drama for lack of a better term. As cool as a moth dress would be, and I do plan on maybe making a moth dress in the future that's, you know, not related to that species, I don't need one. But I, at the very least, deeply want to have a community where people feel safe and welcome. And if me dressing up like a moth and pretending to be gassed from the sky or putting my finger in a little trap and giggling that I've gotten caught in it would harm someone, I can go without doing that. It's really easy, actually. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> to summarize that into one sentence, if your pretty project is going to stress someone out or cause them emotional harm, it's probably just not worth doing. At least that's how I would appraise it. Another really good question is, am I actually gonna be the focus of this project or does it have educational merit outside of me wearing it? Like, is this something that you're making literally for someone else? Like I'm researching traditional Mexican wedding attire right now because one of my friends whose family is Mexican and Catholic is getting married and has asked me to make her dress, which I'm so excited for. And I want to do justice to the project. And that's, that's not for me though. Like I, I wouldn't necessarily look into Mexican wedding ceremonies and techniques and motifs and things, and then make myself a, a Gothic Hispanic wedding dress because I'm not Mexican. I'm not from that culture. I, I, I wouldn't have any meaning attached to it. But my friend who's gonna be having the beautiful goth dress does have meaning associated with that. So it is meaningful for her, it's beneficial for her. If you work for a museum, it's not like you can never ever make a thing if you're not from the people that made the thing. Like people tend to catastrophize and go to this like, this dystopian future where you're never allowed to eat sweet and sour chicken again unless you are specifically a Chinese to American immigrant, you know? And that's not what anyone's saying. People are just saying like, be respectful, be tactful, and for the love of God, do not make a moth costume and then pretend to be rounded up and harmed because of you being a moth. Ah! was such a bad idea from every possible angle. And the more that you think about it, the worse it gets. But 
I really thought it was a good idea, guys. That's the thing. <sighs> she could tell I was distressed. <laughs> Basically, all that rational people are asking that you do, think about your place in the context of the whole, and maybe put the shovel down if someone points out that you're digging yourself a little hole. And like, I really want people to, to understand that like, no one is saying that you making a mistake makes you a bad person. Unless you're making like the same type of mistake over and over for like an extended period of time, then you know, maybe it's time to just throw the baby out with the bath water at that point, because it's a bad baby. <laughs> that wasn't a good joke, I'm sorry. No one's upset about like thought crimes or like having an idea that turns out to be a bad idea. That's fine, that's allowed. And it doesn't make you a bad person. And feeling the need to mourn a project that you were going to do or something that you're gonna have to go and redact also doesn't make you a bad person. It's okay to feel a little bit inconvenienced and it's okay to be sad about it. Just don't make it someone else's problem. Basically just try to be teachable and empathetic and you will never be canceled. Or just be James Charles. Like, that man is made of like plutonium and Teflon. But thank you for sticking around and watching the video. If you're watching to this point, I assume that you're, you know, one of the people that's usually here for these, a, sus a subscriber or an admirer who has not yet hit the subscribe button, please do. Going forward for this channel, I'm going to be doing more commentary and pop culture stuff. This is more on the side of, of sewing commentary, which is going to be sticking over on the Maya Grace channel from now on. And over here, I'm going to be talking about things like the costumes in Winx Club and how Senator style is interwoven with that and things of that nature. Because that sort of content tends to do really well actually and wild enough there is an audience for it, which I was genuinely not expecting, but thank you audience for that. <laughs> But all of my free sewing content is always going to be available on the Maya Grace Sews channel. I'm still going to be making free sewing patterns for you guys. I just have two things happening now instead of one thing. I also have just accepted a, a part-time job. I can't really reveal any of the details yet, but there's some cool stuff that might be coming from me actually in, in about two years probably. It's, it's going to be fun. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like so that more awesome people like you can see it. If you liked this video, subscribe. You'll probably like the next one. I think I know what the next one is on the schedule, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> and if you want to super support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Kofi? Coffee? I've heard it both ways. I currently have the goal to break even on all of my expenses for this channel, the other channel, and my sewing expenses for the year. And once I break even on that, I'm going to be releasing a free sewing pattern and driving to every single one of your places of business and giving you a little smooch on the forehead before disappearing, it's never to be seen again. Okay, bye!